Trudeau government under more pressure yet again today to scrap its controversial carbon tax. The Prime Minister meeting with Alberta's Premier Danielle Smith. She is a huge critic of the tax. It's set to go up on April the 1st by about 25 percent. And it's a major part of their discussions today happening in Calgary. For that face-to-face -face with Smith, the two have had a challenging relationship. But now seven different premiers nationwide, including, yes, Danielle Smith, are pushing for either a pause in the increase or to get rid of the tax altogether. Here's some of what Trudeau and Smith were saying today. An area where we don't quite see eye to eye, the, the carbon tax, I think uh, we've now seen seven premiers have suggested that we need a pause on April the 1st. So I'm very hopeful that uh, we can maybe come to some solution on that to address issues of affordability. Obviously we will also talk about uh, uh, pricing pollution and making sure we're protecting uh, future generations and jobs. Uh, I'll highlight that as of uh, beginning of April, uh, the average family of four in Alberta will get $1,800 a year with uh, the Canada carbon rebate. That's uh, money in people's pockets even as we fight climate change. All right, let's bring in conservative strategist Andrew Brander, who's joining us. So we're going to agree to disagree, I guess, listening there to both leaders. Uh, the pressure, though, on Trudeau is growing, definitely, Andrew. How do you think it's going to play out? Uh, well, Todd, this isn't the first time the premiers have taken a run at this issue. You'll remember in 2019, the premiers of the day uh, took issue with, uh, with the prime minister over the carbon tax. Uh, McLean's did a Vogue-like cover at the time. You might remember it, calling it the, uh, the resistance. Uh, since then, Premier Houston, Ford, Moe, Smith, uh, they've all been um, very big advocates against this policy, running their own respective provincial campaigns against the carbon tax. Um, we've also seen many leaders of uh, the opposition in, in these provinces actually take uh, take a stance against the carbon tax themselves and try and distance themselves from their from their federal cousins. So it's clearly not uh, a popular policy. The, the, the difference this time around really has to be um, noticeable for the prime minister in uh, calls from premiers like Andrew Fury, uh, who was until recently one of the prime minister's closest allies on the Council of the Federation, the group of premiers. Um, and, and, and obviously, if the prime minister can even count on, on the support of his closest friends on that council, um, he's not seeing something that the rest of them, the, them are. And I think he needs to listen very closely to the advice that they're, uh, they're trying to offer up to the prime minister. Yeah, let's show the premiers who are uh, calling for a, a tax hike pause or in some cases getting rid of it altogether. And you mentioned Andrew Fury, Newfoundland and Labrador, Doug Ford, Dennis King from PEI, Scott Moe of Saskatchewan. We know Daniel Smith, of course, has been a real critic. Uh, also Tim Houston there of Nova Scotia and Blaine Higgs of New Brunswick as well. Uh, but, you know, this is something that the Liberal government has really championed. And do you think they are actually going to recalibrate that uh, despite this, this pressure? What's, what's in it for them? I mean, we know an election's coming up. Could you see them backtracking? Uh, look, I don't think they can. I think the problem for the Liberals is that they have been so dogmatic in their approach around carbon pricing. Um, if, if the, the main um, impetus of their argument has been that carbon, you know, that the climate change uh, does not take a break, then how on earth can you possibly uh, give a break to, uh, to a carbon tax? Um, look, the, the Liberals have made efforts recently to try to rebrand this to Canadians. Um, you know, they've gone through the process of, of retitling it, the carbon rebate. Um, they've, uh, they've made small exemptions. Um, uh, you think back to the, uh, the carve out that they uh, granted the Atlantic provinces around uh, home heating oil. Uh, so, so certainly um, there's, there's room for movement. However, that caused a whole bunch of problems for the Liberals when it came to internal caucus management um, and really leaves the door open to any kind of exemptions being debated a lot more than, than they should be. Um, so at, at, at this point, I don't think it's something that they can retreat from. Mm. Uh, perhaps the best move for them is to uh, refocus the conversation around uh, increasing the financial incentives uh, to help offset 
uh, some of the pain that Canadians are feeling because that's because that's ultimately what's driving this to be to be the number one issue for voters. Yeah, we're just going to show what the increase will be as of April the 1st, as you know, Andrew, from $65 a ton to $80 a ton. And, you know, the prime minister talking about these rebates for Canadians, it really is sort of the battle for public opinion and the terminology being used as well, trying to say to Canadians, look, you know, you're going to get money back as a result. Is, you know, is that is that resonating, do you think? Uh, I, I think at one point it did. I think since then it's become very clear uh, to Canadians um, that that they're, or at least uh, you know, the majority of Canadians, that uh, they believe there's more than one way to fight climate change, and that's the the answer to that is not just in a consumer facing uh, uh, carbon tax. But it's it's certainly, as you said, Todd, uh, you know, a battle of of sort of public perception and opinion, much like how the premiers. Uh, will often cause for a uh, interest rate freeze right before interest <laughs> rates go up. I'm not sure how effective any of this will be um, in in changing the opinion of the of the federal Liberal Party to uh, to abandon their position. But it's very popular politics locally, um, and and so I know that that's exactly why the the provincial premiers are doing this, knowing full well. Uh, that the price is going to go up on April 1st. Always good to see you, Andrew. Get your insights on this. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Todd. Conservative strategist Andrew Brander joining us from Toronto.